approach insights, a lot of defaults and executes that they like to play, and just a way that they're able to clutch out in some pretty insane moments. You would hope to see them today at least. It is the quarterfinal matchup between 100 Thieves, TSM, a game that we've been waiting for all day as soon as we saw these two teams lined up. Bind will not be played. This was actually banned out on the side of TSM. So this is 100 Thieves' pick on Ascent, and TSM are going to be defending first. Yeah, th this is a map that there's been a couple, really, that they've been truly terrifying on. I think Ascent and Haven are the two that I swing towards TSM because they are so deadly on those two maps. They've definitely shown a few vulnerabilities here and there, but those are the first two maps in the series. Similarly to what we said before, when we saw Sentinels go into it, it looks like they should be relatively heavy favorites. But the fact is, 100 Thieves have one factor that TSM will never have, and that is they are an unknown. We don't know what to expect from them. We have very few maps that have been seen from them. And TSM, well, sure, they've been changing things up quite a bit recently. We've seen a, a few different agents coming in for their comps, even a Viper actually coming out, although I don't know if that would be something that's just left for the early stages of the open qualifier. But more interestingly, for example, Sub Rosa has completely switched back to a controller role. So it's going to be tougher Found to play them. against them because it's not the same as before but at the same time i'm sure 100 thieves have done their research two very different compositions just a one duelist on the side of tsm of course it's waddell surrounded by the bridge and the silver to hopefully set up a few of his plays different for 100 thieves they have the killjoy for one very good on ascent and the double duelist with the rainer and the jet much more aggressive play style you'll see asuna doing a lot of this similar to sean for gen g whether the game's got a similar way it's hard to say really at this point but right now 100 feet's taking a leaf out of t1's book and doing absolutely nothing for the first 30 seconds yeah, playing patient maybe expecting some level of aggression to come out of tsm Blinded. one thing i am going to miss is hazed uh, playing on the omen <laughs> Very good at it on this map in particular. Nice start though from Cutler. In fact, Drone is going to chime in and the spy has been dropped with the trade. They come back in a matter of seconds. Asuna even shooting his own teammate. He's so trigger happy at this point. And now it comes down to the remaining two members of TSM. They're going to try and make their way back in. One of them is Wardell and he starts things off on One to Asuna. is just hiding back and he's going to be left all on his own. The smokes leaving him sectioned off for a second or two, but he does still have the shot call available. It doesn't quite do as much damage as he would have liked, and Hayes is eventually going to close things out. A great 2v3 with Wardell leading the charge. More importantly, a pistol round for TSM. Yeah, it felt as soon as that spike got planted that there was too little from 100 Thieves, either when it came to the people on the site or even the health that they had. Really made it difficult for TSM to play for the retake, which they tend to do quite a lot on this A site. So 100 Thieves are going to be forcing this up. The Stinger and the Marshall are going to be in play. Asuna are going to be going towards B main, which TSM are stacking the majority of people towards A at least. Going to be poking towards mid to try and take control there. And there's a lot of tripwise at least for B, so Asuna could probably maneuver his way around it, but he's very much going Lone Warrior. Now, the weaker weaponry, or the cheaper weaponry, I could say. Not really that much of a detriment in this game. We've seen some pretty tasty stinger plays already throughout this Shadow tournament. And traveling. for now, Here. Nitro. Well, he's going to be caught out. Wardell playing a little bit more aggressively, but using the range to his advantage. Asuna eventually will be able to trade him out. We'll just check a few extra angles. The fact is, though, it's actually short control that's being fought for for the moment from TSM. Soon he needs to be careful that he doesn't get peaked from drone over on A short. He could be played off. There's so much utility there. There's a really deep cipher camera from the side of Haste. They're going to be sitting far away. They don't want to take these engagements, but they know that the executes come in through with that shock dart. All of this utility is from 100 Thieves on to nobody at this point. Ace is happy to sort of wait, and it's going to get that frag into a sooner, who has left. a bit of a pain in the backside so far for TSM. The spike is going to get planted, but it's a 2 versus 3, and both players from 100 Thieves kind of stuck planted. on the site. Dicey needs to hit some pretty tasty martial shots, and unfortunately for him, there's nothing he can do. He's so blind, but still manages to take down a third. 
Now, in isolation, it's an okay round. Now, we know that this isn't the normal case for 100 Thieves, where we're talking about this being a few classics, maybe a ghost or two. That was a full investment from them. So they've done some damage. They'll force a few rebuys. But the fact is, into this round, if they were to reinvest fully, it would be a pretty big risk, which will be facing off against the rifles of TSM. So ultimately, the conversion is the main thing. I was a little bit worried, though. And actually, with the amount of money they've managed to make over the last couple of rounds, there's going to be more invested in this one than you might think, Ryan. First buy from 100 Thieves. They already have a Hunter's Fury and an Empress. So maybe a Recon Bolt is going to come out from Hiko. Get somebody towards a main or garden. It is going to be used towards mid, but it doesn't pulse for Cutler to get area. caught out. He's nowhere near having his own Hunter's Fury, but gets the same amount of information. None. So this is typical for what 100 Thieves like to do. They like to take mid, but you can sense the TSM are expecting it. Paranoia in hand from Sub Rosa, ready to explode onto site if needs be. They have the breach there to flash as well. They just don't have Wardell, who is right in the corner of Cubby A. Aren't you going to see Hunter Fury you invest in these bypassed his opponent, though? Still, remember, they're saving Thieves almost money for a buy in the next round. So any extra damage that's done here by 100 Thieves would be considered a success. And right now, we're not in a bad position whatsoever. However, Wardell in a good spot, but he's only going to get one. The plant on A looks almost inevitable. And actually, Dicey has managed to retrieve a Bulldog. This is starting to become... Possible for the side of 100 Thieves. And they are making these rounds tougher and tougher as they go by. Now, both players have come from the heavens. The same angle. Dicey, ready and waiting to try and watch onto the cross. Try and stop players from getting towards this team. Fantastically. Well, it won't matter, though. He gets both kills, ending the round with a 4K. And 100 Thieves with a thrifty buy take their first round. And this is a key thing that TSM needs to be careful from. You can't give 100 Thieves an inch. They will take a mile. Every one of these players could clutch when needed. And it's a straightforward round to at least keep things close and not let TSM build up a bit of a lead on their defense. But it has crippled TSM's economy. And their guns are good to go. But it seems now that the thieves aren't really dedicating to too much. The ultimate on the side of Wardell is going to be used. The Bladestorm with a hot peak. The Breach Flash is going to try to set him up, but the Recon Bolt has meant that he might want to play back a little bit. Good information for 100 Thieves right now who have been dedicated to all that much. And the Rainer still has the Empress. The Bladestorm is still available from Dicey after that 4K. Seems that they're trying to set up a plan going towards B. But I'm actually quite surprised with how passively, at least, Asuna is playing. Swarm grenade out. Oh. Important round for both sides. Guardian in Rosa. Shadows traveling. The rest of the team definitely having some pieces missing here and there. 45 seconds on the clock and the attackers now slowly making their way in towards this b-site you can see hazed just trying to catch them as they go past and sub rosa is going to be in position a few spam shots actually connecting a little bit of extra damage 30 seconds left but ultimately not going to be able to do too much in fact sub rosa is actually going to go pushing all the way through using the paranoia to gain himself an extra little bit of ground and the time is starting to tick this is becoming a little bit of a problem scenario now for 100 thieves but they find two three kills still with a third 10 seconds left the last this left all onto sub rosa and there's nothing he can do they may have had some decent positioning tsm but every frag goes the way of the thieves and that's how you play the clock you just run down the time go for an execute even that long flank coming out from steel was super well timed in some cases it can be a little bit early getting caught out with people rotating or just too late where it doesn't add anything but he is the igl giving commands from distance trying to give information without playing the cypher is very difficult to do it's going to be a full buy from TSM, so there's a lot still on here. As soon as it's going to be pushing mid, might do it aggressively with the Omen to take control. We're just going to bait towards B main and try and face off against the Breach and Jet that's on shot and the Omen that's mid waiting too. 
Rosa already taking a pretty nasty tag. He's trying to get cheeky around mid. This is something we saw quite regularly from... Oh, no, sorry, not Cutler. Hayes. When they previously played this map, and it hasn't gone to plan. There will be an instant trade coming in from the side of TSM, so it's not the end of the world, and actually just going to use the Cloudburst to get drone out of there. A trade, though, for the attackers? Never really too much of a bad thing, Ryan. Far so good. There is a Rolling Thunder available now. If Drone wants to use it, he is going to be beating him up and he closes the door and it's just gives it up so much for Steel to just peek around the corner and be able to free fire in the right position. While Dell trying to use his smoke to skirt across the top of Rafters a little bit, but Steel yet again gets a second. So Spike is going to get planted. Nitro's lurking. He will do this a lot on the 30 attack. seconds left. And that's probably Spike one of the reasons why TSM are going to be considering saving right now. It's definitely a rough retake if they were going to go for it. And they still have a lot of the utility available as well. Either just to be used to hold on to their weaponry or even just to pick it back up and have something into the next. Even still, though, 100 Thieves looking good. And in fact, they are on the hunt. Cover going Starting out. to look for these remaining weapons, guessing where their opponents are going to be sitting. Obviously not wanting to throw too much weaponry away themselves, not wanting to rebuy too much going into the next round. But if they can remove this weaponry from the side, the TSM, it could be worth it. Cutler, though, already going to pick one off. It seems like the remaining players are being a little bit more hesitant here. So no real losses for the side of TSM, at least during their save. But it is still the Thieves to take another round, three in a row since the pistol. Some buys still coming through for TSM. Try and force what they can. Save coming into the next round, potentially. Drone is still good to go on the Rolling Thunder if he wants to use this it. The lockdown is good here. for Steel too. Which might force TSM to play oh, a bit more aggressively on A main, because that is such a common spot to use that lockdown on attack. It is the area that Steel is facing in, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be a hard dedication from 100 Thieves. They really do like to sort of buy up their options, not really dedicate too much to either side to have that information given away easily. A really respected TSM here, but they have so much control of the map already. I got the spike. Oh yeah, this time, the battles from Sabrosa over the last couple of rounds haven't really been going that great in mid, so it's a change. I'm going to try and have Wardell watching from short and a more passive stance, which, in fact, that's what we see a lot in Europe. I, I think European teams are, are much more willing to just completely abandon mid, and I, I think TSM are almost using it as a confidence play in some of the earlier stages these rounds but again we're gonna start you seeing run. a slow take towards the b site Camera with it. the lockdown initiated it leaves one player completely trapped within the site i think they need to try and get rid of this and it seems like they have it leaves now with a slightly problematic situation for the 30 seconds left. Of these they were hoping to try and force these players out instead they are gonna have to battle for this site as soon as he's trying to spray, he's trying to find. There is a man in that smoke, but unfortunately he's not found him and he's just lurking around the boxes. It's a fantastic crop out there from TSM. Right. So right. you'll get one with the operator, but the time now ticking and night Ten seconds seconds left. on the other side. It will be a back and forth with TSM evening the score once again. It falls out the neural theft, so they know where Nitro is. There isn't gonna be any time to really chase him up to take this phantom from him. But these are real mind games now coming out from either team. So different to the Gen G Sentinels game that was so much more higher paced. Well, the Gen G really dictated the tempo of that game completely. And it's a similar thing here for 100 Thieves, but TSM look comfortable to match to it. Still a buy, mostly at least from the side of 100 Thieves. But there's no ultimates available. The lock yeah, the lockdown didn't catch anything though from Steel, but he is halfway almost to getting another one. So yet again, picking up the orbs, getting the plant in, trying to just build up as many lockdowns as he possibly can on this attack. Waddell is going to meet them. That's a really good paranoia though. He isn't going to catch anybody. And Hunter's Fury is going to be used. He misses the shots, but manages to pick okay. him up with a classic. Waddell style points there to get the kill onto Steel, and it's a bit of an impact for 100 feet whose money didn't look good already, but being a person down, TSM looking on, uh, on top right now. 
Yeah, you know, hit, hitting the, the easy operator shot, that, that's not his style. It, it's the fadeaway classic kill. That, that's a little bit more Wardell. And now, while Nitro trying to get his way through, is actually going to be caught. And the Rolling Thunder is killed off as sooner as well. A break from the scoreboard is all it really was, as now things look straight back into the favor of TSM. And the remaining two players, in the form of Dice, awful lot to do. Another one for Wardell. This time, you know, with the operator, back to the standard. And Dicey, the problem is he's got 45 seconds. Realistically, I'm sure he'd love to keep this operator into the next round. Maybe take a few players with him. But at this point, it's so long to save. I don't think the defenders are gonna let him, and he's coming under pressure with so left. much different utility. They are fully on the hunt, and a missed shot just can't be allowed at this point. They're using so much Whoa. utility to get him, they can't get the frag. Sub Rosa is just, it's the matrix to him, he's just dodging, and he's oh. 30 health, so it must have been leg shot or something. That was so trolling. <laughs> he just comes jumping through, almost willing his it opponent worked. to hit him there. 100 Thieves are still buying. But they still have money. It's kind of impressive how they've been able to keep it up like this, but TSM taking the lead. The operator's yeah. still in the hands of Wardell. He's going to be very happy with that, and they're building up a lot more bank to be able to do it in the next round if needs be. Oh, they have the From the that. Shadows. That's going to be played towards B, but probably going to be using the Paranoia to set up a quick play to get Wardell into an aggressive position. As soon as really not put too much pressure towards B main, it's just been a Leah and then move into mid with Nitro, but we haven't really seen that impact or the fear set in for TSM. They're respecting it. They've got a lot of side for utility towards there to keep it in mind, but they just don't look phased at all by what the Thieves are trying to do in mid now. I almost like the change. I, I think giving it up is, is just forcing 100 Thieves into a more heavy Nowhere execute style and... As of right now, it hasn't been going too well. They're trying to rely on Hiko to find one, and he actually does catch out Hazed. That's a pretty big hit as well, with the amount of utility we've seen him use to try and hold on to the B site. Although this round is a complete change, they've decided to stick Wardell there in response. But because of that, a lot of ground has gone both ways. The A site has seen a push all the way through of the defenders, and on the other side of things, the attackers have pushed onto the A site. Sabroza is trying to work out what to do, and he's actually going to use the From the Shadows just to check that B or move away completely. 30 seconds left. What? Bit of an interesting play, really. Are they just hoping to save at this point? Do they really not want to take this fight? Seems difficult on the side of Cutler and Drone to try and get out at this point. They have no idea where any of the attackers are. Very odd from TSM to try and give that fight up, but 100 Thieves just did so much awkward map control that where do you even begin to try and retake a there i i want to say that was a miss call like i they, obviously it's impossible to say but realistically you have the back of a and then you're looking at holding on to heaven right and he teleports the other side of the map i can only assume that comes oh. from a call say oh no oh, oh that's, no. that's tilting that's the worst there's nothing worse than that dying to the stupid little turret Oh god. But yeah, I I I almost want to say that that was just a that they expected maybe a B play. And I so I don't know, like cuz I feel like surely Subrosa could have got out of there without wasting an ultimate. That's the thing that confuses yeah, like saving I have got a problem with but dedicating an ultimate to save is I don't yeah, I think that was just a miss call maybe. But either way, a 100 Thieves did make that round really awkward because it was it was a position as well where TSM have so much map control, but they've also lost map control that you never really expected them to lose. So a bit of a peculiar round, I would say, from Ooh. both sides. But ultimately, 100 Thieves aren't going to mind. They managed to win a round. They keep the majority of their players alive. And considering their bank was getting a little bit low, they're now in a pretty good spot again. Their pints are in TSM right now. Drone is probably aware from it. So it's just going to try and meet it. Can get one. Almost gets a sooner, but might just to get the headshot just in time. Haste is now going to be watching towards Cubby as the rain is still in mid. Had to back off. The door's going to be closed in the face of Haste, and the sooner's not going to be able to lurk anymore. Spike is going to get planted, but it's a three versus four. Don't think there's going to be an ultimate available. Steel's just trying to see if he can bait out any more utility. But look at this, actually. The Jet is pushing on the head. Wardell misses the shot. Stacy creating a lot of space, and the lockdown's even going to be used to try and keep this site protected. 
Do we see TSM try and push in now to try and get rid of it at this point? They're actually going to try and do it. Cutlass able to get one, but traded out by Hiko, who is on a main. He's going to get flanked, actually, by Sabrosa with the perfect paranoia. Two versus one. The lockdown isn't going to find too much. It's just steel in a one versus two, surrounded at this point by the defenders. Can't even get his hands on Hazed. Defuse is a straightforward one. An interesting play from TSM to beat them there. Bit of a misplay from 100 Thieves, I feel. Yeah, I think it started off really well from Dicey. Like, the, the push there to even things up was perfect. It was just the fact that I don't think they had anyone properly covering in towards short A. So they kind of get caught out on the way back. And that's also how the, the ultimate gets destroyed as well. So then they get denied the lockdown and a lot more space is gained by TSM. At the same time, to bring it back after the lockdown is placed and it was a 3v3, very well done from TSM. So making things interesting. Now, from what we've seen from them statistically, this is a map where... They, they do well on, they do relatively well on both sides, but it's the defense where we see them put up the heftier margin of rounds. So definitely not too much of a problem for 100 Thieves just yet. Wardell, caught between two angles. Asuna. There's going to be some aggression, and Asuna has actually managed to just walk. That, it seems like he just walked into B, got yeah. a kill, and walked away. Like, I don't know how he's managed to do that so clean. You'd be surprised with the amount of times that a player could just walk into a site because I guess the defenders assumed that they would never do it. There could be so much space exploited. And that's the great thing about having Nitro and Asuna just be the satellites almost for 100 Thieves. Nitro's not going to push beyond this, but look how much utility from the Cypher is dedicated just to make sure that he doesn't push towards their spawn. It's not really achieving too much when it comes to map control, but it's taking some key utility away from B. Hazed is just a body there. And if he takes a 1v1 fight against Asuna, I would assume he'd lose. The ultimate orb is going to be picked up, and now the Empress is available too if they want to push on in here. They could just do it off the back of this Rainer. The issue is, she needs to get a kill to get some health. 30 up. seconds She's left. Half HP, so needs to create a play, and there's only 30 seconds left for 100 Thieves to try and hit a site. It has to be B at this point. There's no way to rotate, but Steel is baiting and lurking as always. This is getting ridiculously Get long. Oh, trying to pull rotations. Push oh, comes in. Ten but seconds it's just left. the bait and switch. They needed the kill to come in, but however, Cutler at the back of the site could be a huge problem, and the time has now ticked too far. There is nothing to the side of 100 Thieves could do. And this is the risk they take pushing in so yeah, late into the site. They did not expect two players to be all the way at back there. And unfortunately for them, it's now going to be another round for TSM. Starting to gain some momentum, it seems. And on the other side of things, the money is a little bit awkward. Now, if they go for a buy, either it means there might be some utility missing or some slight weaponry missing. I'm looking at Hiko because he's the one with the majority of the cash. But realistically, it might just be a hero rifle. I, I, the main confusion there was that Nitro bought up with him as well. But the fact that now it's just Hiko going for that hero rifle, absolutely fine. Soon is going to be pushing B main again. He's uh, having to back up as much as possible, but it's just going to be scared off. He only has a sheriff at this point that he can't really take that engagement in the way that he's hoping for. So Bros is going to win that fight anyway without Shadows needing too much utility. Just smokes it, Cypher closes the door to make sure that there can't be a mid to be hit, at least without a lot of noise made. Look how close Drone is willing to hold here. Steel, though, still wins that engagement. He's going to back off as much as he possibly can, just needs to fight. Brings out the ultimate. Nitro's made his way into sight with the help of his team, but... Cutlass Recon Bolt. Is it going to find too much because the Paranoia is really good? So he's going to hit across site, narrowly misses players on site. And it's actually Hiko with the aggressive ultimate that gets the frag. Luckily, Wardell can do a lot more with the Blade Storm, but Hiko from A main. Cover going out. Nobody's going to be haunting him yet, but Sabrosa is still wanting to make sure that they can take him out of this left. engagement. Certainly, with the fact that Dicey has the spike, hasn't planted it yet because he doesn't know where these defenders are. Shadows traveling. Again, the time ticking all the way down, but they're already on the site. They're just trying to find some extra information. Revealing area. 
Ten seconds left. They will be able to do just that, but they have to go for the plant now. They're leaving things very, very late. They need somebody to go on multiple different man. angles, and they're just not going to be able to do it. Already one picked off. It's left on to Dicey. There's nothing he can do. And again, it's another round in a row now. An operator save and TSM. They're grinding them out on the defensive side. I have to say, though, I, I, I'm... I'm impressed with like some of the earlier rounds we saw from 100 Thieves. I'm, I'm hoping we'll see them at least show up a, a relatively stellar defense. But it, it actually seems half. to be a, a lot of the more utility-based players who are, are doing a lot of the work. Like, obviously, you've got Wardell still stacking up the frags here and there. But Cutler, obviously one of the players at the top of the board, normally put into a, a more supportive role. In fact, previously uh, playing... Here on the omen and moving over to sova yeah. we've seen a lot of changes actually from tsm as of yeah. recent with like uh previously uh sova for drone now moving over as well to pick up the breach which is clearly going to be a big part i imagine if they're attacking side and well i'm gonna see the fault line expended early into this round deal just patiently waiting trying his best to work with the killjoy which is not necessarily the easiest job in the world, and I know that players like Angel, for example, have said that the use of a uh, Killjoy. I like the use of the smoke, though. They covered off the Killjoy bot because of that. They don't actually know that somebody pushed through the other side. That is brilliant from TSM. That's given Hazed two free kills off of a simplistic smoke, just to deny that knowledge. At the same time, the trades come back, but Sub Rosa is there once again. It's left onto Nitro. One versus three. Oh, he's been spotted as well. Just as he makes his way around the corner. It's gonna be Odin spam. And it's just to get a kill onto Wardell though. This is now the realms of possibility. A little bit of extra cover. He's got his paranoia as well. With both players around that corner, they're gonna start spamming left. just to try and kill him off before he makes his way to the spot. They don't know how far he's gone. It's another one coming up for Nitro, and somehow he's still standing. Into a one versus one, omen on omen. Sub Rosa facing off against Nitro, and Sub Rosa will eventually close it. A little bit too close for comfort for TSM, but ultimately sides. they managed to string a multitude of rounds together towards the end of that half, and they will take things eight and four. Replays of everything that we just saw, thanks to GoPuff. And TSM just seem to be very comfortable with playing up against what Hunter Thieves are doing with their comp. There isn't a reliance on ultimates. You've got the Hunter's Fury, you've got the Lockdown Show, but some style points for Sabrosa, who had a brilliant half. This smoke play is exceptional. And it's something that we just... You would expect to want to see from 100 Thieves at this point on their defense, certainly from Nitro doing something similar, but... A lot of people think that TSM has just been dropping off when it comes to the way that they play. They do need to attack into 100 Thieves now that might be looking to play mid very aggressively with the bodies that they have there. Hiko playing from all the way in their spawn, trying to take these fights, can at least get on to steal. As soon as able to trade the smokes and all of these fights, as soon as just trying to run in. What a mess, but somehow it's still a two versus two. The, the spike's just gone. Like, Hazed is like, right, you guys keep fighting. Keep right, working the distraction. Uh, I'm just going to go and plant the spike on the other side of the map. I'm not interested in those battles. I want the round win. And now we get the face-off. Nitro. One end. We've also got a long rotation from Cutler coming Cutler in as well. Potential for a cheeky surprise flank to come in, and they know where Hayes is. He's just trying to buy time, but the fact is, there is that flank. Eco comes down, and it's left all onto Nitro. The new man on the block, the massive transfer that came in to this 100 Thieves roster, but I don't think he's going to be able to do anything here. Hayes has played that round to perfection, a 9 to 4 in favor of TSM, and now we get to see what's invested in this next one from 100 Thieves. I've been known to force on either side on the round after the pistol. They just can't let TSM keep running away with it at this point, so it's just so much safer to save. Yes, this should do. And it's crazy how TSM are willing to meet 100 feet in a fight like that really and still manage you. to at least come off even. It was a nice play from 100 Thieves to try and 
go for the defuse, but the flank from Cutler was so good. Yet again, Andre Thieves are going to put a lot of pressure from short, from mid. But really, the only one going to beat them is Sub Rosa. He's got the better gun. He's got a Phantom. But if he gets caught out here, that's a big gun that they can get. But luckily, the rest of the TSM is covering him. Three easy frags to try and clear up the middle of this site. You would expect the TSM would make this 10 4. I will hear. Yeah, that'd have to be something pretty ridiculous. And our drone is going to find out where the last player is as well. That was the one sneaky remainder. Not too much about. That was Nitro, of course, and not quite to be. Hiko, he's pulled off many a clutch in his time. This would probably be the best of them, if I'm being honest, and that's throughout a, an insane Counter-Strike career. Mainly because this looks impossible. They're trying to hunt him down. They don't want to allow Hiko to even hold on to his classic. This is completely unnecessary from TSM, but they are asserting their dominance in the server. 10 to 4, lead extended. Well, this could be it for 100 Thieves. And not in a sense that if they lose this round, they're out or anything, but more so it gets to the point of no return this is a heavy investment this is a weaker purchase although i will say we did see tsm invest mostly into rifles just to make sure they kept it clean Wardell might be a bit quiet uh, the attack op isn't really as prominent as it used to be since the the nerfs to the pricing and just the movement changes dicey though Willing to face the Eldron is going to let him know at least more is there. And as soon as actually just going to try and meet him, he can at least get one. But it's trade outs. TSM managed to find ways to even punish aggressive players coming out of 100 Thieves on this defense. They haven't gone on for the execute yet. They just want to be really careful. And this has been a sign of an improved TSM. They're really making sure that they check all of these corners, that they don't get caught out by some Nitro Steel mind games at this point. And it's a great way for these more established Counter-Strike, ex-Counter-Strike players to try and clutch up here in this 3v3. I can't say I'm surprised TSM coming into this tournament looking strong after, as said, what was a disappointing tournament at Pot Flash. I'm, I'm sure over the last couple of months they've been stewing, waiting for this first strike event to start. Evidently, hours have been put in. Changes, area. massive changes have been made there to their comp are. and what agents are being played. 30 now seconds it looks left. impressive. Bear in mind, this is their opponent's map choice. Sure, it's one that they're very competent on. Don't get me wrong. It was a risky pick. A, a one that I think 100 Thieves knew was going to be rough, but this is impressive. So Wardell is going to spot his opponent. He takes a hell of a lot of damage onto the cross. Now, he's the man with the spike. But he's got Ten Hayes seconds left. defending, holding, Planted. watching to try and cover them off. But Nitro wins that duel. Puts Ooh, them into a good low. position in this retake. And that shock dart is almost enough. But Cutler's trying his best to deny them any further presence on towards Wardell. However, Ryan, this one's looking rough. Not made any movement. I think at this point it's going to be a save, but they could at least get the operator out of Wardell's hands. Now they're going to try and push and go for it, or just make sure that he can't get off this site, but he's still able to do damage on Tahiko. Cutler is like, not again. I don't want to deal with this turret, please. Look at this. He's just going for it. Wardell is forced to dash away to back off. and Classic jump in right click. <laughs> It, it, it's a classic jump in right click, Tom. We know we know what this is like. But to end it like that, though, it's BS. That that's that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I like the idea from 100 Thieves to try and punish the economy because the operator is so expensive nowadays. But Wardell still finds a way to manage to keep it. This is so dominant on Hiko and 100 Thieves' map pick. This is the map that they wanted to play, and this is a map that TSM didn't look bad on. They won it 13-6 against Renegades. And the map that they lost, which was split, I'm going to see until the third map, if we even get there at this point. 100 Thieves need to try and clutch up on Haven, it looks like. Well, their attempted retake in the last round was a failure. It was a 3v2. One of the players was low, and still Wardell styled on them like it was absolutely nothing. Because of that, he gets to keep his operator. 
unfortunately for 100 Thieves, uh, it's quite a bit more damning. That, that was a lot of money that they lost taking a big risk going into that after plant situation. As you sort of mentioned, it, it seemed like initially they were saved, but I think TSM did a good job of denying space, denying them time, and well, eventually, Wardell again Blinded. managing to hit his shots. The investment into the Sram Ryan, unfortunately, it's going to be mostly pistols and for Nitro. His luck doesn't seem to be changing. Caught in the head through the smoke. He does a good positioning here, though. 30 seconds left. This has got a nice little off angle he can maybe get a kill on, but that's kind of been the story for 100 Thieves. Like, these players that have done some insane clutches over the past couple of days, not really finding their shots or that confidence to open up a site to make yeah. a play. I, I mean, it was that. <laughs> <laughs> sooner, sure. I mean, he hurt me clearly, but Rose is able Last to get to. Standing. He's getting free. He's Fight mowing planted. them down. It's just going to be Steel, who's been waiting on A main this whole time. Not even really worth saving with the guns that he has. So Rose could get the ace. There is a player dropped, but unfortunately, it's it's dropped in the center of the B site. So for Steel to be able to get anywhere near his opponents is going to be a pretty rough one and i have to say that he's someone that when it comes to his killjoy i'm looking forward to see it more and more because there, there are a lot of sort of players that have been switching back and forth and a, a lot of them just purely dedicated themselves to the cypher but there are nowhere near as many that have gone purely in on killjoy like he has so i want to see more of it unfortunately the main thing we were looking for is on the defensive side and by the looks of it, they might not get much of a defensive side i like that though patient he expects Match a point. push okay. did he get the gun oh he didn't get it that's rough definitely did the work and make things more costly but no weapon as a reward placing alarm box placing swarm grenade wardell having twice as many kills as his jet Hang counterpart up. has the operator on his defense but half armor but Still got to try and make a play they're both stacking up on the b site usually what this means is that dicey can be a bit more aggressive by holding the operator and the sooner we'll just keep pushing but steel is going to be hit hard already the average truck actually stops him from pushing into a safe position but he still manages it anyway two health is wardell the spray able to do so much damage to him but not enough to be lethal unfortunately the eldron is going to scout a little bit find the steel is there but they don't know that he's in the cyber cave it's very messy very scrappy the doors can be closed into the face Nice, he's able to get worn and now the rolling fund is going to be used for the attacks of TSM drone making some space but Asuna and Dicey actually able to make some plays. The Empress is out from Asuna. This is more like it from this player but he doesn't know where any of these attackers are. He's got to deal with Omen right in this no corner. Way, so Rosa has a nice little off angle and now the Hunter's Fury from distance from Cutler is going to try and stall it out at least. He's dead. Oh, he's dead. Dicey's <laughs> got him. An important round for 100 people to win but Still cost a lot, a lot of ultimates, a lot of stuff used, but that's more like it from a sooner. Yeah, definitely what we want to see, because that's ultimately the, the the only reason you have that Rainer is for those sort of clutch situations, those DPS stats. Realistically, he's not been bad, but we needed to see a little bit more from him. I love that animated spray. I think it turns off Get when the map starts. Yeah, it does, because it's just a pre-round one. But the lockdown is available on the defense. That's the, the jump boost, maybe? <laughs> I mean, Wardell, you don't miss. Ridiculous. I think it's easy to sleep on him nowadays, because liking Wardell was so, like, June 2020. <laughs> like, when it came to his plays, but he's still good. And I think this is, even this map alone is a dominant trend for TSM to show that, yeah, people are raving about Sentinels being the top team in NA. After Sentinels today, it's still very much open in the air. And 100 Thieves, 12-5 down, four players, they have a lockdown, but that requires them to play pretty much on a retake. Steel with the operators looking down A main, but TSM going to try and use this to their advantage, knowing that 100 Thieves will be trying to play the sites, trying to play off of the central parts of the map and use it to an explode in an area. Nitro is close. He's going to be holding in Garden. How many but he also, they Yeah, they're just stacking operators at this point.
Just the two. Oh, okay. I imagine that was Dicey's. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I think he just picked up the op from Dicey's corpse. 30 seconds left. Gonna try and man it himself. He was a, a primary orper. Shadows traveling. On Team Liquid, so he definitely can wield the sniper. Can he get anything here? No, he can't. Drone with the opener. And now it falls onto one man. Steel to try and hold the line. And he gets nothing as well. A slaughter on the A site and the end of the map. Ten looming. seconds left. It's left Spike on a landed. two versus five retake. Hiko alongside Asuna. The young and the old. Experience and the rookie. And it's left on to just the rookie. 17 year old to try and clutch versus five players. I don't think it's happening this time, but maybe he could pad the stats a little. It will Attack be drone to close out map number one. 13 to five in favor of TSM.